Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your Fleet Admiral Araxis, and welcome to another ship review. This time it's been requested that I do the Heavy Escort Carrier, also known as the Armitage class. Um, this has been heavily requested over the past couple of days by one particular person. He knows who he is. Um, it's been a long time since I've done a ship review, so without further ado, in this glorious new Earth space dock, uh, about time they did something with the old one, let us see who I am reviewing today. Or what it looks like at least. As you can see, we've got the Armitage class. Uh, already decked out in custom blue decals. Material 6 for that extra white sheen look. You have the different templates Akira, Oslo, Zephyr, Thunderchild, and Armitage. Akira, this is the first one that we ever saw of Star Trek. Uh, designed to defeat the Borg. We have the Oslo, which personally I think looks absolutely disgusting and have no intention of ever using anything like it. Zephyr, um, it's a prototype steam runner by the look of it. Then we have the Thunderchild, and then the Armitage. Again, you've got everything to mix and match, as well as all the different patterns. I'm going to cancel that because I've just done it and I'm not going to redo it. Right. Now what I'm going to have to do is set up my stations. He has scatter volley, good. <laughs> Someone has something still. Uh Sivius. No, he has beam. Karan's gonna have to go there, and Sivius is gonna have to go there. I'm gonna have to have Mary there. I'm gonna have to have Zam there. No not Zam. Tishun. Not to show, sorry, Legan. There we go. Let us head into space and I will talk more about the ship's set current setup. Loading screen. Right, uh, the exterior of Earth Space Dock has also changed, so I'm going to have to find somewhere which has got really good lighting. This will do. Right, so again, this is the Armitage class in space. It's a very, very nice looking ship, in my opinion. Very sleek. Right, so moving on. Why have my tactile consoles been removed? What sort of idiot did this? Right, moving on. As you can see, uh, typical to all Federation uh, escorts, four four weapons, three AF weapons. Uh, focusing heavily on tactical, four tactical consoles, three engineering consoles, and two science consoles. Because, but because this is a carrier as well, it has one hangar bay, and this hangar bay can hold six small fighters, four shuttle, four larger shuttles, or two larger frigate ships. This cannot carry frigate ships; it isn't big enough. But it can carry shuttles and fighters and a winger fighters. At the moment, I am currently using the Solnir set because it is the best set I have available uh, to me. And I'm using Elite Fleet um, Disruptors with the Disruptor Locators as well. And the Heavy Gravimetric Torpedo just for the sake of it being there. Now, the special console that you get if you buy the Heavy Escort Carrier Armitage class, you get your Universal Console Torpedo Point Defense System. It fires. Uh, a volley of six torpedoes um, to any enemy within the area, uh, each torpedo doing uh, just over one and a half thousand kinetic damage per hit. 
Uh, but like all kinetic damage, it will only do that said kinetic damage if there is no shield facing blocking it. So currently the defense on this ship, because of my setup, is the following. As you can see, 7,000 shield facing, uh, 47,000 hull, very good for an escort, 47,000 hull. Um, and 12.7 and 78.6 for crit chance severity. It's movement. I should really start moving. 34 degrees a second. Not too bad. Not too bad indeed. And as you can see, the Starship stations. It has three tactical. Now, personally, I think the ensign tactical or the even l the lieutenant tactical is a bit over the top for. Um, for any ship. They should not have three of the same position. Uh, the commander tactical, perfect. It's it, it's a T5 escort. It should have tactical. A good tactical setup. So, I can understand the commander. The lieutenant or the ensign, I, I would say take away the lieutenant and give that to either, is it either um, a universal or maybe a engineering um, with it being a carrier it's a hybrid it's slightly more engineering based than all-out offense so I would have thought an engineering station would have been better I mean it does come with a lieutenant commander engineering station which is better than most escorts do um, but again the three the three tactical is a little bit of a letdown a little bit over the top a universal could have went in straight away and made this ship so much better than what it is um, but as you can see commander tactical lieutenant tactical Ensign Tactical, Lieutenant Commander Engineering, and Lieutenant Science. So it is able to heal itself to some degree. And because I can, I'm going to poop out a little phoenix. For those of you who missed the event, I am sorry that you did. Right, uh, as you can see, I can carry six Peregrine Fighters, which I will launch out now. There they go. Oh, that one decided to fly over that way. I don't know why. And then I have a little cool down before I can shoot out some more. I'm actually going to move away from Earth Space Dock. Just so that I can get everything into perspective a little better. Right. Then if I poop out my next lot, they all come out of this little bay here. As you can see, there's a bay, but the bay goes right the way through to the other side, so they can come out of one side and enter through the back. And as you can see, they're all lining up quite nicely there, my little peregrine fighters. There you go. So the hangar bay is, you know, it's it's a nice addition. Uh, like I said, it pulls it away from being full escort and makes it more of a hybrid. Um, now, obviously, with me being a science character, I'm not going to get the best best DPS out of this but I can still show you how it maneuvers. Right, so what you want to do for any escort, shields right the way down, lock that. That right the way down, lock that. You want your engines and you want your weapons for an escort. End of conversation. So now I have a movement of 38.2, which means it is more than capable of using cannons. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the video, and when I come back, I will be in probably a patrol mission, uh, just to get straight into some fighting, okay? And I'll show off the point defense system, uh, the carrier in action, and as well as how the ship itself handles in combat. So, see you in a moment. Right, guys, and we are back. Just jumped into the Japori system easiest one to do is just a patrol mission to dis destroy the occasions and the Enterprise decides to join me which is a bit annoying because I want to show this ship for what it is n not for what it's getting helped by anyway I am going to have these little guys escort me for now just until we get closer to the enemy which is the occasions over here or the Norskans depending on your pronunciation of said word right all set up is cannons let me fire the cannons. As you can see, it can pack a punch when it wants to, very, very easily. Uh, being a science captain, I do have my photonics. Uh, 
Point defense system away. As you can see, lots of torpedoes just flew out of the back of the ship. It's got a three minute cooldown, which is a bit annoying to say the least. I apologize if the ship is jiggling a bit. Uh, very, very not used to using escorts anymore. Very much used to using beam boards again. As you can see, the shields aren't the greatest. They will get taken down fairly quickly, regardless of what I do, um, which is a bit of a shame. That and I don't have my uh, pot tray set up to um, tray seven, so that I can do my keybinds. Again, a bit annoying, but what am I going to do? As you can see, it kind of does make short work of the enemy. Uh, it is very capable as a ship as well as a carrier. Probably more so as a ship than a carrier, to be perfectly honest. But it works surprisingly well. Surprisingly so. Absolutely wiping the floor with the enemy. And to be fair, for an escort, it's not as squishy as it seems. The shields, yes, are a bit lacking, but they're still quite high for, for said escort. And the hull isn't terrible. The hull is, you know, like I said, 47,000 on, on any escort is really, really good. Let alone the fact that it's, you know, a Federation escort. has really really good maneuvering it's really fast it's really maneuverable it, it can take a bit of a punch because of the fact that it's got high hull you know if you get the setup right you could probably get it you know if I put the fleet shield on I would have a higher a higher capacity uh, my fleet shield has a higher capacity than the solenair and if I had the uh, adapted Mako then that would be even better See, it's, it's it's very capable, and I've just made mincemeat of was it five waves of enemies in less than three minutes or so. It is very very much a capable ship, uh, to say the least. Uh, partly because of the way I've got it set up, partly because it is generally a decent ship. Now, in comparison to other tier fives, um, you know you've got things like your tack oddies. Um, which will be a hell of a lot more tanky. Uh, it's an Odyssey. It's got more crew, which means that the hull can regenerate quicker. The subsystems can regenerate quicker, uh, which gives it a massive advantage. I mean, this ship only has a crew complement of 200 against the Odyssey's 2,500 or something like that, um, which is not great. But then again, this has higher burst DPS. It can use dual heavy cannons. It's got the it's got the movement to be able to keep up four heavy cannons it can keep the enemies in the front of the ship um, the fact that it's got the six paragon fighters as well as standard yeah they're not the greatest but they still help in their own little way I mean the paragon fighters here you know they use cannons themselves and they've got micro photon torpedoes I could get the elite versions which move up to chroniton torpedoes or uh, quantum torpedoes something like that um, or heck even go for the elites if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to get stupid and buy the elites from the fleet store. So you've got many, many options there. And again, I mean, this doesn't seem like much, this uh, torpedo point defense system. But if you have a sh ship set up which is designed for torpedoes, boosting torpedo damage, uh, consoles which boost torpedo damage, uh, three-piece or two-piece bonus sets, again boosting torpedo damage, that will all stack on top of this because it is a torpedo launcher, in, in essence. Uh, so that'll boost the damage that this thing can crank out. And if you're only fighting against one enemy and you take the shields out and you fire six torpedoes instead of one, what's going to happen? You're going to do a lot of damage. The only thing I can say is that this thing is good. Uh, it's, it's a defense system, point defense system first and foremost. Um, the good thing about that being is it, will, it says it'll attack nearby enemies. And it will. 
uh, it'll attack enemy carrier fighters. It'll attack tor targetable torpedoes such as the heavy heavy plasma torpedoes or uh, the the uh, heavy tholian torpedo web torpedoes or whatever they're called. Uh, anything that's to targetable which is heading towards you, it will prioritize them, hit them so that you don't get hit by them yourself. And if there's none of that, it will just go straight for the nearest ship. And like I said, if you manage to take their shields down, just like the kinetic cutting beam, six torpedoes is going to pack a punch. Okay, the um my best setup for this would probably be the adapted Mago set. Um for a more engineering feel to it, you know, make it more tanky, make make it fit the carrier uh, side of the ship better. Um, or if you want to go all, for all-out offense, the Omega set, it's basically designed to improve offensive capability. So, at the end of the day, if you want a carrier which is more offensive than your cruiser, but still has crew capabilities of a cruiser I would say this is a great ship it's easy to use it's good for a beginner who isn't really sure of the end game scenarios um, it's one of the first end game ships that I used personally and I used it for quite a while and I really enjoyed it um, now I use the uh, with there's been a science character obviously I've moved back into the science ships you know your vestas your fleet science ships but that'll be for another review so I hope this was a little bit informative, I know it seems quite a short video but there's not really a lot to say, it's basically, you know, you're meeting two veg, it's a simple ship, it's what you see is what you get, there's no hidden hidden objectives behind it. So I hope you enjoy this review and I hope it's been helpful in helping you decide what ship you want for end game. Anyway guys, more ship reviews to come in the future, if wished. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>